Yeah, sorry, a little poke there. Great, we, we're done with numbing. Okay, great. Yeah. So what's happening now? I'm gonna start the light position. Okay. Light. Is that a little better? Oh, that's nice. Okay. That's perfect. So it's now happening. Yeah, it's now happening. You see this? This is it. See that? Wow, that's the good stuff. See the color of that? That's the good stuff. <laughs> See how, how, nice, stuff. how nice and pure this is? That's the, There's no bleeding in it. That's because of this way of doing it. Look at that. So. That's the first pressing. Yeah. Extra virgin. That's right. <laughs> You're the first journalist, I think, ever that is having a liposuction while talking to the camera. Yes. About explaining how it feels. Mm. I thought that was quite quite a shocking scene. I did. I interviewed the doctor and um, it was quite, it was uncomfortable and I didn't really enjoy it. Um, and in some ways I have mixed feelings about having done it. You know, all things being equal, my preference generally is not to get too involved. Um, but having said that, there was a certain momentum in the course of making the program. I, re I realized it, it you know, I would need to do it to sort of see the project to its natural conclusion. Was it your decision? Yeah, it was my decision. I wouldn't have let anyone kind of talk me into doing that. And if I ever sensed that there was any weight of expectation on me, um, I, w I, you know, I would resist it. Um, but I saw, you know, I saw the rushes from, from the, we made two or three trips, I think. And I, originally I thought I'll get something like, I get my lips made plump or, you know, some Botox injection, something temporary yeah. and trivial. But when I, very early on, I had a consultation with a doctor who, we were just there to interview him about another patient he was working on. And I just said, oh, I'll take my top off and you can have a look at me on the spur of the moment. And he said, you'd be a pretty good candidate for what they call liposuction, having my fat removed. I, had no, I thought I was a skinny person. So it was a quite a shock to be told that not only was I not skinny, but you know, a surgical removal of my fat would be recommended, or at least, you know, could be beneficial. So I did it. He talked you into it. He, I guess, he talked me into it. But in a weird way, my journalistic conscience did it. Did it more than anything, you know. And in the course of doing a job, you do things that you don't necessarily want to do. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and I suppose I saw a certain weird perverse sense of integrity about what the job demands. Would you do it again? It's quite expensive. I thought the BBC were going to foot the bill and I had to pay myself. It was about 5,000 American dollars. I don't believe you. Mm. I paid myself. So... You paid for the liposuction that everybody was talking about for, for, for months. I had to pay for press. it and, in, you know, in the gambling one I had to gamble with my own money and, you know, the BBC being funded with uh, People, you know, pay a license fee, so people are very, the British public quite rightly is quite protective of, of what the money gets spent on. So if it looked as though I was kind of spending the public money on um, surgery, plastic surgery, mm -hmm. then there'd be, there'd be certain resistance to that. How much stretch is there still on the Louis Theroux character, the way you do things? How much longer can you keep doing this? I feel, I mean, I don't want to tempt fate, but I feel like I could do this um, the rest of my life because I don't feel as though I, you know, I feel my character is, is me, is who I am, and I feel like I'm interested in the world and that the world is continually throwing up fascinating and bizarre and counterintuitive and strange ways of existing. How much longer can you do this? Because if you approach people now and say, hi, I'm Louis and I mm. want to follow you for three weeks, I'm sure a lot less people will be uh, enticed to go along with that. I disagree. Um, I feel as though you know there's no trick. It, it, you know that I make more or less uh, straightforward, first-person journalistic, experience-based documentaries about fascinating worlds. And you know, I work under my own name. I'm not Ali G. Um, I'm not Borat. Anyone who I interview is free to Google me. Usually we'll send them a tape of something that we've done in the past to give them an idea of how we, how we work, mm -hmm. you know, what they're exp you know what, how, how the finished program will end up looking. And touch wood, so far it's never been an obstacle. And, that, you know, people are happy, 
you know, for the most part, with you know, feel that we treat our subjects and our stories fairly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'd like to imagine. Maybe I'm deluding myself, but I'd like to imagine that um, that we can keep that we can keep going. You know, that my, whatever profile I have will never be, um, you know, create problems for us. Are we ever going to see a Louis through that's completely different from from the one that we uh, that we know so well? Now, is there ever going to be Louis Theroux doing Newsnight, or no? There won't be no, no, won't be Louis Theroux Newsnight. There won't be a Louis Theroux chat show. Um, you know, I'm very, you know, either lucky or unlucky in the sense that I have fallen into the one job in television that I actually can do, which is uh, being Louis Theroux. If if it were, if I had to walk onto a stage, or if I had to do what you're doing, for example, I really don't know if I'd be able to do it. Um, I, I, you know, I think I'd get too nervous, and I, you know, I, I like going out into the wild world and having these experiences, and then, you know, making it into something. I think you're uh, doing great at being through, and you. I wish you many more years. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks.